Welcome to Visionaries Global Media, your number one source for podcasting entertainment. Visionaries Global Media, envisioning excellence on a global scale. Band from Ringside. Tonight on the Band from Ringside podcast, Cody slaps Rock across the face. Mercedes Mo- Monet makes her big AEW debut. You, the Bang Bang Scissor Gang. How will history remember thee? That and a whole bunch more tonight on the Band from Ringside podcast. Where did Cody's five fingers say that a rock's face? Slap! Ditch that nine to five. It's time to feel alive. Hello, I'm Mark. So welcome to the Band from Ringside podcast. As always, I'm your host, Bill Vaggy, a.k.a. Tanga. Set your expectations lower. <laughs> and sitting directly across from me. <laughs> We have Jason Cornelius Bell. What's going on, JCB? And if you want the beef and you bring the ruckus, BFR ain't nothing to fuck with. And on that lovely note, I'll bow, ask the congregation to bow their heads as I read them from the latest edition of the Man from Ringside podcast, volume 351, chapter 3, verse 14. And the good smart saith, hashtag boo the heels. It's all good, baby. Listen, share, subscribe, repeat the holy trinity of BFR. Uh, I wouldn't say an interesting week, but a, a somewhat newsworthy, somewhat slow. But we're going to wrap it all up in two hours of pot. Let's do this shit. And out there in Portland, Oregon, we have two beers. Zach Coleman, what's going on? Two beers, Zach. Be off the Western House. When you analogizing us to the Wu-Tang Clan, now I'm wondering which members we would each be. And I'm trying not to be old, dirty bastards. <laughs> Man, you're old, dirty bastard. I'm sorry. Fuck, I knew it. Fuck. <laughs> like I want to, I want to say that I'm like I'm the Jizza, but really I'm like Chef Raekwon when he put on all that weight <laughs> later on. <laughs> I just want to be Red Man. <laughs> I, say, I don't care who I am. Just I just want to be a part of Wu Tang. Fuck it. <laughs> you can give me any one of the motherfuckers you want to. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess I would give you Method Man in in, in this scenario. I would say that you're Method Man. I, I appreciate you know, that. I, you know, if I am indeed the quarterback, you know, you are uh, RZA throwing the disc, but then change the bank's source. I would love to be the RZA. Uh You know what? I I could think about and talk about <laughs> this for a long time. Uh, <laughs> I was getting ready to say Wu Tang is one of his phase. We could go down this rabbit hole. So uh, we are coming at you from beautiful St. Charles, Missouri. I don't know if both showing up tonight or not i haven't seen him uh he's been showing up a little late but we'll see um you know we're on the road to wrestlemania as people love to say uh during these months exciting times in the wrestling world i do have to say that i was um i had the week off i have the week off so i've been doing shit around the house and i've been i had a baseboard project today because i put the floor down last week and i was in the garage uh, cutting shit with a miter saw. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, that's my Tim. And, uh, you know, all the old guys in the neighborhood kind of wander out, and they kind of wander over to my garage. What you doing there, Bill? All this to say, I didn't get it done in the allotted time that I gave myself because I'm terribly unhandy. Um, but also, I'm tired as fuck. So you guys, <laughs> it's you guys tonight. I'm just going to fucking sit back. I, ain't, I I might not even talk. Yeah, right. You want to hear my Tim Mellon impression? Yeah. <sighs> That was me inhaling very loudly. <laughs> <laughs> In fucking incredible. <laughs> Let's get to that three count. <laughs> you ain't shit. <laughs> JZB, kick it off. Uh, let's kick it off with uh, the receipt heard around the world. Let's go over to SmackDown on Friday night. We'll just jump to the final segment because essentially it was the main event a spot where Cody and Seth Rollins answer the bloodline challenge and pretty much with a Cody slap across the face and Seth Rollins, I won't say destroying the rock, but definitely uh, getting a little revenge on the verbal side as well, calling him middle-aged over the hill and his time has passed. Neither here nor there. The acceptance has been made, so we're going to have officially two main events with Seth and Cody, obviously night one being the tag team match with Seth and Cody versus Rock and Roman. Obviously, we know the stakes there, and then that will spill over into night number two. I was talking to Tinder Mahal. I guess this was Tuesday or Wednesday night. I can't remember. My days are mixed up at this point. And 
I'll just say it like this. I I don't know who we're going to pick. Obviously, the picks are coming up here in a couple weeks. But if I had it my way, my wish, I want the bloodline to win night one so night two could just be all hell, all no rules, no nothing. And if Cody wins that, then he's truly the undisputed champion. It's the biggest way you can put him over because he's a – Literally have come over, overcome all the odds in front of him. Every single hurdle literally put in front of him, he's jumped over. That's just me. I'm sure that I'm probably wrong. Plus, they've done a really good job of bringing, like, um, other possibilities in. The Michael Cole interview on Monday night where he directly asked uh, Cody, could you trust Seth? Can you trust this person or that person? They've done a good job to where now – you could see in a plausible sense why Seth would come in and interfere. You could see why maybe Jay Uso would come in and get a, be in a part of it, maybe join the bloodline, very far-fetched, but still in the realm of possibility. I'll just say this. I love The Rock, and I always will. I have no problem with him getting eviscerated on the mic it's going to happen. John Cena is one of the best ones that I can remember that I ever did, and I will always take that to the grave. He just destroyed The Rock on Monday Night Raw on the road to WrestleMania. But all that being said, The Rock has made this interesting again, the bloodline angle interesting again. I remember talking about how this, for me, I've been one of the staunch proponents of this from the start to this point. Never really wavered. I know Zach said it jumped the shark at one point. For me, it did kind of get a little stagnant, but now we're back on track to where now every week I want to see what's happening next. Zach, what did you think of the segment? Yeah, great segment. Um, You know, it was really down to the wire, like uh, got that slap in. I thought it was all really, really well executed. Everybody did a fantastic job. Uh, except the fans, like, chant diarrhea. Let's fucking get out of here. Um, please never have that chant ever again. Grow the but, fuck uh, up! <laughs> exactly. I don't have that drop um, anymore. No, but well played, well played. I'm with uh, Jason. I was just talking with somebody, uh, like an in-real-life person that I was talking wrestling with, which you don't really get to do very often. Mm. But uh, I was there, and I was like, man, I was like, I feel like it's got to be Rock and Roman win the tag match, and then, like, main event like Cody's like Neo and like Matrix Revolutions and that like they just bring out like whole American Samoa like high school football teams and you just like rips a ring post out and just like spinning around in a circle just knocking them all down uh, he's gonna have to overcome those obstacles and it'll just make the win that much sweeter so Rowan is not going to lose twice on Wrestlemania weekend so he's either losing night one or night two. Um, I think that he's losing night two, so they're not going to lose night one. I think that him and Rock go over. Uh, the segment, I would say, was almost perfect. Like, I don't I don't even want to go into the Roman calling Seth a cross-dresser thing so much because I know that there's, you know, that is a, that's a term that's not used anymore uh, because of political stuff but also it's just fucking lame like that is a lame thing to call somebody i put on friends of bfr as he did getting all henny youngman i mean it sounds like a 50s insult comic calling somebody a cross dresser that's what they call j edgar hoover it's 2024 man like this is so stupid i thought that the i i actually think that roman was uh pretty bad in this segment i thought that his delivery like he was trying to be something he was not like he was trying to live up to the rock or something that's just not your lane dude you need to stay stoic like try to emote as little as possible let daddy do what let daddy do I just, would be, just and sit back and chill out for a second i thought that cody was tremendous at the beginning cody is i mean he is a, a transcendent white meat baby face like he's more popular now than john cena has ever been as a baby face Ooh. I mean, John Cena never had the entire crowd like this. Cody Rhodes has everybody. Uh, what? I, I mean, I didn't really watch in 2005, yeah, 2006. Yeah, right. Was he that big in 2005, 2006? It's a, it was, it literally, still to this day, divided as fuck. But he still has them. There are John Cena people that are like you that hate his ass no matter what. No, no, no. And- I mean that Cody Rhodes is over 
with everybody as a baby face. Oh, yeah. I think that everybody is. treats him as a baby face, I, and he has a damn near universal uh, universal approval rating. I right? don't think there is yeah, any Cody, doubt. Go ahead. Go Cody ahead. and AEW had, like, the Cena reaction mm. from WWE. Mm. You remember, like, all the, the smart fans were booing him, and then, like, the kids loved him. Um, that like he, he was basically John Cena in AEW, and then mm-hmm. when he went to WWE, it was just yeah, like you said, transcendent. I thought the way that yeah, he opened he opened up that segment talking about can we just step back for a second and talk about how crazy this is and how cool yeah. it is? Like I thought that was a really smart no, way to start it off. No, it, and I couldn't agree with him more because this is going to be one of those builds we're going to always remember. Oh yeah, always. Yeah, we are in. This is better than the build last year. Yeah. And the build scary, last yeah. year, we were talking about it being the best story, the best story WWE's ever done. And Argued this is, about it. You know, is this the best? This is better because you got The Rock in and, it. And now it, it literally came off of the edge of going out of control where you had Punk hurt. You had to adjust to that. Then and they had, pivoted. Then you got you had to figure out what was happening with Seth, and then you figured that out, and now you got the Rock involved, and now all of a sudden this thing has gotten the steam that it had. Let's just say eight or nine months ago, whatever. It feels fresh again, and Man. I can't just wait to see the finish. Uh, go ahead, Zach. Oh, um, I don't have anything to add except uh, I. Whenever you were talking about that cross dressing line, I had kind of forgotten about it. But you're right, and uh, I almost feel like as soon as he said it, he regretted it, like, and it almost caused him to kind of, it just had him, like, kind of off kilter for the rest of it, yeah. Knocked him off his axis for a second. A little bit. Um, The Rock was fucking awesome in this. Hilarious. Always. Clicking on all cylinders. Always. (laughs) I mean, this is, this is, this really is vintage Rock. He is fucking tremendous. And when he had to get serious with Seth Rollins, he got fucking serious. Seth Rollins was tremendous in this segment also. Um, He is really stepping up to his role and he's not getting lost in the background at all. And, um, you know, we'll get to McIntyre, but that is feeding that whole thing too and it's McIntyre is because he doesn't show up on SmackDown he's the main reason I'm tuning into Raw I'm going to see what McIntyre says this week because McIntyre has been really good but anyway um, I was watching it pirated uh, the next day on that I'm not going to say it because I won't get him in trouble but um, I think we all know who it is <laughs> but I, I was wa- and I was looking at the time I was like dude there's only 30 seconds left now wait a minute this seems like this, this is what I was talking about last week though the rock's better when he starts off a show because there's no time limit <laughs> and they were they were having fun yeah, they let them jokers go I was like I was with you I'm like damn this is getting close to the end okay how, how is it again that you watch Wrestling. <laughs> Don is you. <laughs> um, what else? What else happened on? Uh, I don't know if there's anything else you want to say about this segment. If you know, this is four weeks in a row. They're just they're, yeah. they're just doing great work. Yeah, at this point, it's it's like a heat check in basketball. They're they're gonna pass it to them next week. You know, they're gonna put some shit up, and I'm sure it's gonna be good. Yep. Um. Logan Paul opens the show um, on SmackDown, gets interrupted by Randy Orton. I was thinking to myself, okay, there's part one of the possible triple threat. Didn't see KO until later on when uh, Grace Waller and uh, Austin Theory had to come out. They had a tag team match, Waller and Theory versus Orton and uh, KO. Baby faces win, but then post-match, Logan Paul attacks both baby faces so now i think the possibility of a triple threat u.s title match is back on just for the simple fact that logan paul attacked both baby faces zach what do you think about uh logan paul's opening and more there's a lot of chatter about um them putting prime in the middle of the ring as an advertisement a lot of chatter that people are upset about this um it doesn't affect the way it doesn't affect me at all. Like I just could not give a fuck. Zero fucks. No. It's not like it's not like uh some like invasive like ad like uh 
Like, I hate the play video ad that you at the fucking gas pump. Now, that shit gets me on my nerves. But, like, <laughs> if you just, like, have, like, a, it's a Prime logo plastered on a mat. Like, who gives a shit? Like, yes, it's indicative of late stage capitalism, but, I mean, what else is not in your life? Yeah, no, who gives a fuck? Um, what do you think about uh, Logan Paul's uh, <laughs> opening promo? <laughs> Uh, you know, he uh, is really good, and he's very charismatic, and he's a good talker. Um, but you can kind of tell his experience level with, like, WWE talk. Like, he really let those what chants, like, get to him. Yeah. And they really let him take uh, over the promo, which was very frustrating. I hate the what chants. Um, you see, like, Triple H is probably the best at it. Um, he will just slightly change up the cadence of his – voice and uh change his pauses to be less deliberate and it just throws the crowd off and they can't want him it really is kind of an art form yeah um and you know there's guys too that will lean into it a little bit with uh like drew uh you stole my thunder you stole my thunder i was like you shot him down that was a great example of you know oh you want to what me okay fine say what if you look you know you you go thankful that cm punk's not breaking wrestlemania and now it's like oh what and then literally now you don't know what to do drew sitting there smiling it was a i won't say it's a master class the triple h example is a master class this was just another way to do it has anybody ever to the what chance been like what country are you from? What? What ain't no country I ever heard of? They speak English and what? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I remember the Undertaker one time said, if I had sex with your sister, say what? <laughs> I hate that motherfucker, but that's good, too. There you go. Now, was he... Yeah. He wasn't the dead man. He had to be the American badass when he did that. I just saw a clip. It wasn't something that I watched like live or anything, so um, it, it had to have been. Yeah. So, Undertaker's all about kayfabe. Does that mean that he did, in kayfabe, he did have sex with my sister? Because that is... Do you have a dead sister? <laughs> Katie Vick. <laughs> <laughs> nasty, nasty, nasty. Um, let's move along for a little bit. EO and Bailey had a nice little segment just showing both sides of the coin. Bailey being a little distraught after uh, Dakota Scott... Dakota Kai stabs her in the back. Uh, interesting segment with Bianca and Naomi. Bianca not feeling the fact that B- uh, Bailey is getting shitted on a little bit. Naomi is uh, caping for uh, Bailey in this case. Uh, obviously, there's shitted on. <laughs> hey, look, I'm just saying. <laughs> you just got shitted on. Speaking of old dirty bastards, <laughs> that means hope. You've been shitted on. I'm not the first dog that shitted on your lawn. <laughs> <laughs> the Wu-Tang episode. Um, people are saying that this is going to be a, tr- not a triple threat, but a six-woman tag where Jade Cargill gets involved. I'm mean, guessing at the bare minimum we're getting... At Mania? A- at Mania. I'm guessing at the bare minimum we're getting a tag team match between the Kabuki Warriors versus Naomi and Bianca. Do we want to see Jade at WrestleMania? Why not? Yeah, I think so. I mean, if they're yeah, I think, uh, it's a spectacle of the show. It'd be yeah, better with her than without her. Yeah, I think I agree. It'd be fun. It'd be fun to have her show up. Um, that is, I would. You said it's going to be Bianca and Naomi. The rumor that I saw on Twitter would be a six woman tag: Naomi, Bianca, Jade versus Oscar, Kyrie, and Dakota Kai. Uh, Dakota Kai and Naomi seem like outliers in that. I'd rather just see a tag match. Um, but that's because I'm not that big of a fan of Naomi. And I'm a huge fan of the Kabuki Warriors. And I think Bianca Belair just fucking delivers. So, um, but, you know, it's a, it's a big card. And uh, it's getting filled up by lots of Cody's and Seth's and Rock's and Roman's and Jay's and Jimmy's. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I guess get them all on it if you can. I would be hard pressed to see not see Bianca Belair on a WrestleMania. Uh, I don't know how you get her on, but I think somehow, some way, you got to get her on. Um, I know we talked about Bang Bang uh, Scissor Gang as 
the worst angle in wrestling, but RIP. I will say that <laughs> for the WWE side of things, I think I have a nominee for that, and that would be the Kieran Cross and Bobby Lashley feud. This Joker has not even had a single a pinfall, a match, anything. Everything has been some sort of schmaj DQ bullshit. So why the fuck do we keep doing this shit? I mean, at some point, we're not going anywhere. Nobody's getting over. I almost forgot AOP was around. Paul Erwin this guy bit disappeared from the scene of the crime. It's time for the to figure this shit out. Shit or get off the pot, essentially, with this motherfucker right here. Uh, you know, Lashley and the Prophets deserve more. Um, they were getting more love as heels versus what they were now doing, getting as baby faces. They, they, they're over, I guess. They were more interesting as heels versus now watching this. It's bad creative. Zach, what do you think? Yeah, it's not interesting television at all. It's like... Uh, this reminds me of like two dogs who only want to fight when they're on leashes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you bad now. Huh? A couple of fucking uh, regulars at the bar like that. Um, uh, yeah, I kind of. I guess I kind of feel bad for <laughs> carrying Cross is trying, man. I heard an interview with him one time. Seems like a good guy. It, it just. Man, it ain't working. Not at all. Yeah. I mean, this is what the third time they repackaged this motherfucker. The shit has not worked. There's something there with AOP and Paul Ellering. I just don't know why Karen Gross is a part of it. I mean, is there? I mean, they haven't been around in a while. It just feels like it's I'm just saying they could be something if they wanted to. They had they have an act, and it was over at one time. It's the heel tag monster tag team. Yeah, okay. heel monster tag team with the old manager. To- it totally works. Fa- totally fair. I'm just not sure they're even they being Triple H slash WWE or are even invested of of the tag team division. It just feels like they do it because they have to versus them wanting to. Uh, what else? Um, AJ Styles uh, finally makes his uh, appearance via vignette. Uh, tells the world why he flew across the world to fuck over uh, L.A. Knight. I, I found the part where he said that he found L.A. Knight funny up until the part where he got screwed he got fucked over by the bloodline and then la Knight stepped in i just i don't know for why i just thought it was funny did they cross paths in tna i would imagine so it seems like it, they eli drake might have been uh coming in when aj was on his way out maybe maybe i was gonna really say um i didn't watch it that closely enough but AJ's a stalwart of TNA. Obviously. Tell you what, it's a hell of a TNA main event. Eli Drake versus AJ Styles. <laughs> you ain't shit. <laughs> LA Knight destroys TV. We'll see them next week, I'm sure. Dragon Lee beats uh, Anhel. Um, and then, obviously, we talked about the Rock Roman, Cody Seth uh, segment to finish off SmackDown. Let's flip it to Raw where Seth meets Drew McIntyre. Drew's still pissed off for, once again, very good reasons. This is why I like Drew as a heel. Even though his vision is a little skewed, he still sees something. It might be 2040, but he still sees something. Go ahead. Let me bounce this off you, Zach. Do you – Seth Rollins telling Drew McIntyre at the end of that segment, you're the one that I'm worried the least about. Kind of heel shit, right? Am I wrong? No, you're uh, you're right. What did you think about him saying that? I was surprised because I mean Drew is a legitimate monster. Uh, he's super talented. Uh, he beat Brock Lesnar to become champion and had a pretty um, good reign with it during an unfortunate time and. Uh, just in kayfabe, he also he doesn't lose a lot. He's the only guy to pin Cody clean. Or he's the only guy to pin Cody um, besides Roman Reigns in his entire two-year run. Uh, that's a guy that Seth lost to three times, even whenever he only had one arm. Uh-oh. So, um, you know, it doesn't really make sense. Okay, it was yeah, it was just cocky heel shit. It doesn't make me. Uh, it doesn't make me want to root for Seth in that match. <laughs> it makes it <laughs> makes me really want. To, I mean, I was rooting for I was rooting for McIntyre anyway, but um, I really want McIntyre to go over him now. I I didn't understand McIntyre's wh- not even that much of a heel. 
He took a couple cheap shots. He made use of a low blow that wasn't that the referee didn't see. That wasn't one of his guys, and he's got legitimate beef with the Usos. They cost him in front of his family at Clash of the Castle. Look, you ain't getting no argument for me on this one. Like I said, to me, it's twenty forty. You know, he sees the shit. It just might be a little blurred. Um, this to me was a really good segment up until the end, where it felt like Seth was trying to provoke. Drew to attack him, and that doesn't make sense. Why would you want to do that? You got two of your biggest matches coming up, and all of a sudden you want to poke them to Hornets now. And the quote broken back. Right. Okay. So I mean, that, I don't. That did not make sense to me. Maybe somebody else is you know smarter than me on this one, and it was like, oh yeah, you know, this is why they did it. For me, I was just like, no, just leave it alone. Okay. If you want to talk about him, talk about him like a dirty dog. Drew is already up the ramp. It just felt weird to me to try to provoke someone that you're going to have to deal with a month from now for the title. What else we got? Uh, I want to jump towards the end, towards uh, Jay Uso coming out and throwing out the challenge to Jimmy, the long-awaited challenge for brother versus brother at WrestleMania. I know we talked about this shit a year ago when we when we were kind of figuring out that the Usos were going to break up. And they finally did, and we were saying that how long could they wait? Could they make it to WrestleMania? Now they have apparently have done it, and this is one of the matches. I'm not going to lie. Like I said last week, I'm looking forward to it. I wasn't necessarily a Jimmy Uso character fan up until he started to fuck with Jay again, and now I'm like, okay, back invested in the, to at least the angle itself. I think this is going to be a really good match itself. The build the match to the match should be really good. The match, we'll see what happens. Jimmy's going to have to step up to the plate as far as I'm concerned. Have we ever had twins wrestle each other? Not at WrestleMania. No, I mean, period. Has there ever been twins that have wrestled each other? This, I, this In the history of wrestling, I'm sure. <laughs> we just don't know about it. This is really interesting uh, from the perspective that they're twin brothers. They shared a womb together. They obviously started training at the same time. They've sparred against each other more often than anybody else. They've practiced with each other. They know each other the best. I mean, this has a chance to be special, a special match. And uh, I'm really not thinking about it until right now, but it's like, man, the, I, I guess it could not They try to add too much um, shenanigans into it or just like precursors or uh, shad or, um, you know, previews into what might be happening later, then I guess it could get bogged down a little bit. But this could be, this could be match of the weekend, really. Um, Dang it. What do you think, Zach? Yeah, I mean, both those guys can go. Uh, Jay's proven himself much more in a single capacity. But whenever you're, you are at that level of talent, I mean, they're arguably the best tag team in WWE history. Um, from a performance level and just as far as like star power, title range, you know, some of that's kayfabe, but they really got themselves over and but also, they can really go in the ring. But I mean, sorry to cut you off, but also they, you know, when you talk about pitchers or you talk about quarterbacks or something, you talk about how many games they've started, how many matches have Jay and Jimmy had. I mean, it's got to be, you know, thousands. Of matches, oh, yeah. right? You know, so that too. Anyway, go ahead. Sorry. No, you're good. Uh, um, uh, three, are you going to say something? No, that's it. Um, let's go to the main event of Raw because obviously that has WrestleMania implications. You had the gauntlet match where Sami Zayn comes out as the victor, defeating ultimately Chad Gable at the end. Of course, I've been tooting the Chad Gable horn for quite some time, so this was – Definitely had me on the edge of my seat. I will say this. I don't think Chad Gable's shoulders was down for the three count. I'm not going to say that this is going to – I'm crying over spilled milk. It was just an observation. I don't think it's going to matter. I think Sammy and Gunther are going to go ahead and wrestle at WrestleMania, which is going to be a spectacular-ass match. No question about it. This might be the good time to go ahead and let Gunther slide that title on over to Sammy. He's been hitting this blunt for over 600 days. Sammy's the perfect <laughs> guy to take the title off of him. Credible uh, opponent, incredible guy to be an intercontinental champion if they choose to go that route. Zach, what do you think about Sammy winning? Uh, I mean, that is a bigger marquee match for sure. 
far as like a singles match at WrestleMania, Sami Zayn versus Gunther. Um, I think both Sami and Chad both have the capability to have a five-star match with Gunther. Um, so I'd be happy with either. Um, you know, if they want to play that route where his shoulders went down and they want to, you know, go for a match where Chad pins Sammy and then they both go for the title and they do a three-way just like they're doing with the, the U.S. title. Uh, let's, you know, that's a possibility too. The other tens that we've had, uh, you know, we've had other um, three ways for major belts on the other um, WrestleManias that end in zero. So, I don't know. We'll uh, we'll see how it goes, but I think Sammy versus Gunther is a hell of a match. I mean, there's so much intrigue going on with the with the heavyweight belts, um, the Roman belt especially, but really this on paper should be the match of the weekend. Gunther has nothing. <laughs> he just said Jay and Jimmy. Nigga. I said Jay and Jimmy could be. I'm saying this one should be. Semantics. Okay, my bad. All that Gunther. That's only because Yano's not on the card. That's what... <laughs> Fuck you, bleep it. You know, Sammy fucking delivers, and Gunther has had match of the year candidates, if not match of the year, be for winners the last three or four years. I mean, this guy puts on clinics in professional wrestling. This is going to fucking rip. Why do we always say that Gunther, the ideal opponent for Gunther is somebody that he can throw around yeah. and really, A smaller guy, really make it look like. That person is getting. Sammy's almost handled. too big. Even better. <laughs> He's big enough to where he looks like a legitimate heavyweight, but it's not like Gunther is not going to be able to ragdoll him whenever he the fuck he wants to. Let Gunther get one good chop on Sammy. That's going to stop all of this conversation real quick. He'll look like everybody else crumble in that corner. Previous Beefer winners uh, or Beefer nominations for Gunther as match of the year uh, Tyler Bate. Mm hmm. Um, uh, Ilya Dragunov and versus Sheamus and McIntyre. You know what they call that? They call that range. <laughs> Your boy's got range. <laughs> he can have great fucking matches with anybody. So, and Sami Zayn is He's a perfect opponent. One of the best. Yeah. And there's real intrigue because I could see, I could literally, legitimately see it go either way. So there is real intrigue. This is this is a tough one to call, don't you think, Zach? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, it is certainly not a given that uh, Gunther drops that title, even though it's time. I won't say it's overdue, but no, it's, we're, just time. it's ripe. Yeah, it's just time. You, you know what my favorite thing about this gauntlet match segment angle thing was was that they made it, and if they don't end up going with a triple threat with Jad Gable or something. They were telling a story throughout Raw that, and they've been telling the story for a couple of weeks that Chad Gable is, it's his time that, to step that, up. That WrestleMania means something. Me. And they made it feel believable that he could win that match. I didn't think he was going to. Oh, they had me convinced. The, the very first vignette when I saw Chad Gable, I was like, that's it. It's over. But I like that they put the time into making it seem as a possibility and then didn't have him go over because. My time wasn't wasted with you preparing me for a Chad Gable victory. It just had me that much more invested into the match, especially mm -hmm. the ending with Sammy versus him. Mm -hmm. I couldn't agree more. Um, other uh, WrestleMania implication matches, we will have a six-pack challenge ladder match for the Undisputed Tag Team uh, titles. Um, once again, this, this is WrestleMania, so this is the – I guess another way to get everybody on the show. Uh, obviously, you'll have Judgment Day involved and then other matches to qualify matches to figure out the other five teams. Um, I'm just curious to see if Awesome Truth gets into this thing because if they do, that's just I'm – just, I'm not saying. I'm just saying. So it's six tag teams? It's six tag teams and ladder match for the titles. Jesus Christ. What do you think about this, Zach? Yeah, it's like you were saying, this is a way to get um, the guys uh, on the card. And I have an inkling that, yeah, Awesome Truth not only is going to get in it, but I could see them doing a little feel-good thing because they don't really give a shit about the tag titles. And um, 
you know, have an awesome truth, go over and win those WrestleMania, pop the crowd. Um, like that one year, the ladder match opened it up for the U.S. title. Zach Ryder. Zach Ryder won, yeah. I was, that was, you stole and my lost thunder. it the next night with his dad there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, Zach, uh, make sure you bring the title to my one night at Raw. <laughs> yeah, no problem. <laughs> okay, I'm all, definitely have it. <laughs> We're going to need that back. Thanks. Um, Becky challenges um, Nia Jax to a last woman standing match. Uh, story here is uh, Rhea Ripley's t- telling Becky she's burning the candle at both ends. Becky d- gives two fucks. She's going to do what she wants leading to WrestleMania. Man, when, Nia, when Nia Jax came in to beat up Becky Lynch after her and Liv Morgan were getting ready to shake hands or whatever, Nia Jax is like, I'm not done with you. I was like, you're not? <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? Like, she just... <laughs> Like, it's over. Like, what are you still doing here? <laughs> like, WrestleMania is in a couple of weeks. <laughs> She's going to fucking lose again. No, well, I was going to say, if we're going to play the everybody's getting on the WrestleMania card, Nia Jax and Liv Morgan, you heard it here first. Um, Andrade, Rhea Ripley meeting backstage. What's up? That shit better be at 4 p.m. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're gonna, while everybody's still yeah. making the fucking oh, Rotel dip. Sh- Dude, yeah, that, I was actually that's thinking that uh, I was actually thinking that Jade might cost Becky this match, or not Becky might cost Nia the match, and then that leads into maybe Jade versus Nia. Somebody's got itchy pencil fingers over there in Portland. <laughs> This guy wants to book the territory, and I like it. <laughs> you saw my reaction. It was like, Rrr? yeah, I'm into Race that. Woman? I'm into In the that. First hour of the pre-show. I like where your head's at, my brother. Um, Andrade, Rhea Ripley meet backstage. Um, that's TBA. Obviously, Damian Priest at some point is going to cash in. I would assume at WrestleMania. Thus, Go fulfilling ahead. my prophecy that Andrade. That WWE was now going to have the New Day, the Judgment Day, and the Andrade. <laughs> God, that's horrible. <laughs> God damn. You ain't shit. I called that's it. Cool. Yeah, you called it all right. Um, outside of that, I think I covered it all. Yeah, I think we covered it. So that's uh, WWE for the week. Um, interesting builds across the board. I'm so looking forward to WrestleMania. Let me ask you this. Um, is Priest going to cash in on the Intercontinental? No, I, I honestly, I think it's world title or bust. There's opportunities on both nights. Well, I shouldn't say that. The night, I would assume Saturday night is this six-pack challenge for the titles. They'll lose the titles that night, and then Sunday you'll have both championship matches. I'm not sure if it's going to be back-to-back, whatever. It doesn't matter. That's when I think he'll cash in. So you think he cashes in at Mania? At Mania on the Seth Rollins Drew McIntyre uh, match. Not saying he does it successfully, but I think that's when they actually finally pull the trigger. Zach, what do you think? I think he cashes in on Cody and fails. I'd be down with that. I like that better. I told you, man. He's got the pencil tonight. Mm. He's got the pencil. Let this motherfucker cook. Damn. <laughs> I think. Uh, I think. Unfortunately. Uh, Damien Priest uh, was doing a great job, and then he, you know, they put the money in the bank, and then it was just kind of. I think he's a victim of circumstances, and he just doesn't fit right now. Yeah, um, they, they waited too long. He was, it yeah. was, it was pretty hot right after he had money in the bank. Judgment okay, no, Day. No, no. See, okay. See, this is where you said the the right thing, but the wrong person. Why is he killing cash in on Cody? He's got beef with Seth. Oh, He's I got just beef think with Drew. Another thing, like Cody wipes out all the Judgment Day and their families and their brothers and sisters and their cousins and their uh, uncles and next door neighbors and priests and taxi drivers and caterers and everything else. And then he's just one more person that he has to uh, knock down, just like Cody overcoming even more odds. You should have just Super said that. Cody. that that's what, you should have led with that. If you'd have did that, then that would been. I, I would have totally been down for that. Uh, I think that he's going to cash in on the Intercontinental. I I think that he's going to be interesting. Um, it, it just it seems like a cop out, but it would definitely seems like a cop. Now him him cashing in un, or him unsuccessfully cashing in. That's interesting, and I really wasn't thinking about it that way. I was thinking that he would cash in successfully, but I like where you guys' heads are at. Let's get to that two count. One, two, three. 
two beer. What's the two count? Uh, two count. Uh, we just go ahead and jump right into big business uh, first, and mm-hmm. then we can go back and talk a little bit about uh, talking that big business. Uh, Rampage and Collision, which were pretty good television wrestling shows, but not incredibly newsworthy. So uh, the the big newsworthy show was uh, Big Business. That's what uh, everybody's talking about. Uh, Opened up with Renee Paquette backstage running down the uh, card. and Almost getting ran down. (laughs) Yeah, she's like in the, the parking area or whatever, the service entrance, and a car comes in, which very funny i don't know like who drives like what chauffeur or whatever they pull into an arena is just honking the horn and stuff as they as they pull in yeah coming in hot uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> they uh they pull in they stop and then the door opens and nobody gets out uh, but we all pretty much knew what it was and they go out to the ring and um so music hits and i'm like Okay, yeah, this is it. And I'm like, wait, is this Gunther? Because like that music sounded like Gunther's music. And then there was like people chanting CEO like in the theme music. And then Mercedes Monet hits uh, on the screen and she comes out. Um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, Mercedes Monet is all elite. Uh, she comes out. She does. Oh, damn um, time. Shit. You know, kind of like a baby face uh, hometown kind of promo it wasn't super intriguing it wasn't super um it wasn't super smooth it was it was fine it was like serviceable uh but as far as um you know debuts she got a really really good pop uh, but i don't think it was the biggest pop of the night which is crazy and um you know, it was uh, it was pretty milk toast. Not saying that I am not interested in her being an AEW or anything. I think it's cool. I think it can really help elevate the women's division. But um, it was everybody expected it, and then it happened. It was right at the beginning of the show. It, there doesn't seem to be a lot of intrigue at the moment. I don't know what you guys think. Apparently, I wasn't like go ahead. Yeah, apparently she was like Instagramming about being there that night. Like it wasn't. I'm glad that they did it first because um, it seemed really obvious that she was going to be there. Zach or Jason? I mean, they called it big business. I mean, you know, it wasn't like we – it was the worst kept secret in wrestling so far. Matter of time, it was just when and where she was going to show up. Bottom line. As far as the promo goes, I mean, it was standard white meat baby face face stuff. She didn't run down WWE. She didn't run down anybody. She said that she wanted to be there. Uh, I wish that she would have talked about being there to win a championship, um, but I guess you know that's me yelling at a cloud. That's that's Cornet's corner. Um, but I I would yeah come in there and you know rather than say I just want to tear the house down or st- stuff like that. That's a pet peeve. I did like uh, how you too. I gotta want to discount like the personal bit. Like she got pretty emotional. Like she said she dropped out of school at thirteen, take care of her ten year old brother. Like that that was pretty touching and stuff but uh, i think maybe part of it is sasha's or mercedes character has pretty much been the exact same her entire career and it's always better whenever she's a heel and not saying that we need more heels in AEW because we really need baby faces but uh, i just feel like maybe she's more interesting when she's uh what do you call it uh you know cocky and uh you know, want their star power. Anyway, go ahead. Two things. One, well, three things now, now thinking about it. One, I did like the promo. Ultimately, like uh, Bill said, white meat, baby face. I thought it for this point in Mercedes character, she's supposed to be a baby face check Two, um, tearing the house down, winning titles, making history. I think it all is kind of the, I think it goes without saying, uh, you know. Unprofessional bullshit. I think it still goes without saying that she's there to win the title at some point. Right now, happy to be here, you know, talking about the whole shebang about, you know, WWE, not without mentioning it, and then coming over to AEW to have these great matches. The third thing, I'm not going to sit up here and say that she's going to be a babyface. At the end, she Willow, we're standing in the middle of the ring, 
and there is backstory. You know, whether they can spin it where she blames Willow for her getting hurt. I don't think she's going to be a baby face for long. She'll be a baby face in Boston. Sure, they're going to cheer for her regardless. I'm not saying that it's going to stay that way for long. Yeah, it, it kind of reminds me of, uh, and maybe this is where I was uh, coming into it too. It kind of reminds me of like Punk. It's like debut, yep. or like return. Yep. You're like, okay, fine. You're in your hometown. You're baby face, but like, I don't fucking care. This is not, you, you know, yeah, so just you, get on with this. I'm with, no, I'm with you. I re- I'm much rather have Mercedes as a heel versus a baby face. It wasn't that long ago that people were putting nails in AEW's coffin saying, you know, showing pictures from live events saying there's nobody here. I still think adding collision was probably the wrong move. Uh but they got the money for it and they have a lot of, they have a huge roster. But it was not that long ago that people were like WWE's so fucking hot, AEW sucks now, it's not exciting and it did get kind of dull there for a while. Uh towards the end of the MJF run just because the devil thing lasted so long. Adam Cole got hurt. The MJF and the Adam Cole thing really sucked up a lot of oxygen there for a while, and I know we liked it. We did like it. It lasted a really long time, though. Um, But in the last few weeks, they have wrapped up Osprey, Okada, and Sasha Banks. That is a coup, man, and it says a lot about WWE and how good it is that – Personally, like, I probably have been selling it kind of short. Like, AEW is getting good, like, real good again. It's never dropped off too much. Pay-per-views always deliver. There are always great matches. But the um, the week-to-week storytelling there for a while got a little off, and it seems like it's back. Uh, Joe had a big win this week. Um, you know, a title win against Wardlow. He went over strong, went over clean. I like having Joe as a dominant champion. If he's not going to be transitional, make him Joe. Just let him fucking whoop people's asses, uh, Zach. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, I mean, pay-per-views have always been can't miss. Um, and really, Dynamite, for me, is the one weekly wrestling television show that I make sure to watch if I don't watch any, any of the other ones. Um, and... I think it it really does say something about how confident WWE is and how hot the product is now that they let this happen. Because like you said, like that is such a huge deal. Um, Sasha was one of their biggest stars. Um, I thought it was neat whenever they, they pulled the graphic up and said seven time world champion. You know, they weren't not acknowledging um the WWE, you know, championships. And um the Okada thing is going really great. The Osprey thing is going better than I think anybody thought possible. I mean, we all know like that dude is fucking phenomenal, but he's been phenomenal on a very, sorry, a very niche market. Uh, the kind of people like feel like us when you tell somebody that you spend 999 yen a month to subscribe to a Japanese streaming only wrestling promotion. Well, Jason, they're like, (laughs) (laughs) semantics. But like, I like there, if you like see somebody wearing like a new Japan hoodie, like in the grocery store, you feel like you got to go talk to that person. You know what I mean? Like, because you share like this, like very small little thing. Dude, dude, I got to stop. I got to cut you off for 30 seconds. So I was at target the other day. And I had uh, my LIJ uh, shirt on. Dude, it's in Target. It works in Target. Stops and it was like, dude, nice shirt. I was uh, like, oh, dude, rest of us up. Appreciate yeah. it. And we got into like a five minute conversation yeah. about AEW. Real New respect, Japan. real. Oh, nine yards. It's the, real recognize, real. Dude, it's the, it is. That is the realest talk on the pod so far. Yeah, man, when I, yeah. I wore my TMDK shirt to Schnooks the other day, and I was just making real hard eye contact with every dude that looked like me. Like, this guy probably in the New Japan, right? Hey, man, TMDK. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you, you know, off. Go ahead. You know what? But you were talking. You were Go ahead, Zach. Two, it stands for too many don't know. Too many don't know how good that is. Um, but, um, yeah, so um, – 
you know. Yeah, when you tell, well, hold on, hold on. You were saying when you tell somebody that you spend 999 yen on uh, a streaming only Japanese wrestling promotion, they do what? Yeah, like, I mean, they look at you like, what? Um, they're like, oh, that how that's neat for you. Cool. Like, <laughs> you know, they don't get it. Um, but, you know, like, that is. You mean like the fake game. stuff? <laughs> yeah, the yeah, fake stuff. Yeah, exactly. You mean like Hulk Hogan? Yeah, like, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like Osprey's been the king of that hill for a while now, but that is a very small hill, right? It's just like it's a different universe. And for his success to translate to an American audience on live television, um, it is it's the same thing, but it's different. And dude, like Osprey, I feel like got a bigger reaction than Mercedes' debut. Uh, like that music hit and that dude's out there and you can just see he's just got the realest smile plastered across his face. Um, he's so happy to be there. He's so charismatic. Like besides the fact that he's the best ref- in-ring wrestler I've ever seen in my whole fucking life. Um, he's so charismatic. You can tell like the energy, like he wants to be there and the people like chanting like, oh, spray, oh, spray. Like it is next level. Like seeing that, like, I mean, it's, it's just insane that like WWE passed on that. Him, Okada, uh, you know, Sasha, all that stuff. They're let, they're giving AEW all of these tools to be successful. And success does not mean overcoming WWE. It just means having a viable secondary product. And um, it's just wild that WWE is just fine with it. Um. I'm going to push back a little bit on when you say that WWE is letting them have these guys. Maybe AEW just rolled up the Brinks trucks and just outbid at WWE. I'm not going to sit here and say that they didn't bid for them. They didn't, Their services weren't asked for. Maybe just AEW just did the better job and sold it to them. Neither here nor there. AEW has these guys, you know, that's splitting hairs. I wanted to talk about, to me, it's like a reset when we're talking about how – WWE has been so hot, and it has been, and AEW went through that stagnant spot, especially when you're talking about MJF and Adam Cole towards the end. Once MJF coughed up the title, that felt like a reset for AEW. So now you got Samoa Joe as the champion. You bring in Will Ospreay. You bring in Okada. You bring in Mercedes Monet. And now you feel like, okay, this is a new landscape because now we spent a year with MJF. This is over with. And Swerve is a baby face, And Swerve is next. Okay, that was the next. Next words out of my mouth. AEW feels fresher again, but it still has the same good in-ring quality product that we know and like. So I kind of clocked that to uh, what Zach was saying. Like, oh, man, this these guys, th- these fans really like Osprey. And it is going better than I thought it would be going. Um, and then uh, the reason that I think that is because I think that there's a lot of American audiences that know who Osprey is that have seen a couple of his matches that are like, okay, this guy's good, and people talk about him like he's the real deal, so I should probably pay attention to this. And then they see the Takeshita match, and they see the Kyle Fletcher match. Like, they are now getting, like, a weekly, if not monthly, you know, dose of Osprey. And they're like, holy shit, this guy is the real fucking deal. This guy is like what we have been watching in NJPW for a few years because we are pretty loyal NJPW. You know, we watch we watch every single G1 match. Um, so, you know, we've been seeing a lot of Osprey, and I'm not trying to act like I'm fucking king of the hill in terms of being a smart or anything like that. I'm just saying, like, I know – what Osprey can do. And there's probably people that don't have as much time to watch wrestling as we do and don't have a buddy that's going to pay the 999 yen so you can uh, steal his uh, NJPW stuff. (laughs) And so they just don't get to watch as much. And now he's going to get over because he's the best wrestler on the planet. Yep. No guys here. No guys. There's going to be so many kids' favorite wrestlers. There's so many kids out there right now that don't know that, like, Will Osprey is going to be their favorite wrestler. Yep. And... It is, um, I mean, as far as just, uh, it's a wild time to be a fan. It's like, I feel like when we started the podcast, it was the fucking dark ages. And <laughs> I mean, like, we've like, gone through a whole renaissance. I mean, we've gone through a lot. It's been a crazy, it's been a crazy seven years in wrestling, to be honest. It's like we've discovered, like, penicillin. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> like that's how much it's improved the quality of life. Wait a minute, we can keep years. living? <laughs> yeah. What? People stop dying of tuberculosis. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! But, um, Sign me up. But yeah, really excited. Um, you know, uh, we get uh, Danielson and Osprey. Uh, Dynasty, which I'm super stoked for. Oh yeah, I owe you. I owe you money. Is one of those tickets mine? Absolutely. Yeah. Oh yeah, I owe you money then. Okay, cool. I just didn't <laughs> yeah, know. I just didn't know if I had to buy my own. I didn't know if, if like that, I didn't. Fuck you for not. No, buying I, th- I. I thought no. I knew that he got four, and I thought that maybe I didn't speak up soon enough. But yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, that's gonna be. Yeah. That's gonna be fun. I mean, I'm I'm flying halfway across the country. For that match, basically, even though the rest of the card, I'm sure, is going to be great. But I, and also to see you guys and eat Lion's Choice and go to Joya's. But um, the, um, oh yeah, it'd be my parents and my daughter. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, um, <laughs> the, uh, that has the potential, that will be, um, I'm sure, that'll be the best wrestling match I've ever seen live in my life. Oof. Like, I, I, it might, it has potential to be the best wrestling match you've ever seen. What's like, what's uh, currently the best match you've ever seen live? Um, one of the most memorable, um, so it'd probably be up there, uh, was uh, Daniel Bryan versus AJ Styles when Daniel won the title from him on SmackDown. Oh, that's a good one. That's probably it. Uh, I didn't go to any uh, pay-per-view shows whenever I was a kid. Went to a couple of Raws, but that wasn't really known for wrestling. Um, <laughs> really not known for wrestling. But. Jason, same question. Uh, at Taker, HBK2. Oh, yeah, that's right. You've oh, been yeah, to that, re- that, that WrestleMania. That <laughs> yeah, that does make yeah. sense. <laughs> My answer sucks so bad. Never, Just never mind. Just for you. <laughs> <laughs> say, no, I've been to a couple Royal Rumbles. They were cool. I remember seeing Punk versus Ziggler for the belt one time. Uh, I really liked, really liked that match. I don't know. Hard to say. Now you weren't with us when Sting uh, showed up at uh, yeah, I was. Survivor Survivor. You were there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was. Okay. There's there you go. Something. I think I went for a piss break. <laughs> it sounds it's like, like Sting's here. That means nobody's in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> just Time kidding. To go. Great career. <laughs> you ain't shit. <laughs> I'm being serious. I know. That's why you ain't shit. <laughs> uh, Bill mentioned it, that the Mojo beat Wardlow. Um, this was a pretty good TV uh, title match. Not a TV title match, but because Joe laid that one down uh, mm. before he won the world title, but a title match that was on TV. Um, you don't really normally see Joe get thrown around like that, um, so that was pretty neat. Uh, and I also loved that Samoa Joe, in order to take Wardlow down, he did the choke, but he like jumped on his back, like he was like his <laughs> little brother or something, <laughs> and like brought him down with a chokehold. Um, and you know, uh, not surprised. I don't think anybody expected Wardlow to win the title or anything. Um, we'll see where Wardlow goes from here. Uh, but this was really about Joe looking strong, getting over on a giant, and uh, being a dominant champion. And Swerve comes out, uh, throwing around security guard. Uh, Samoa Joe just slowly saunters away, um, just like not running, but he's just like, yeah, I just had a match. He's like, you can be mad. You know, you're so cool. He's just so cool, man. Samoa Joe's just so cool. I loved his promo pre-match also. Mm. It was really good. Mm. Um, oh, yeah. It was nice to see Wardlow in a match that wasn't a squash match because he is a fun guy to watch. I don't, I don't remember him doing that many fucking moonsaults, but um, I I like this match just fine. It was funny. Um, I'm with you on this one, Three Beard. I didn't have any expectations of Wardlow winning this match. It was just, you know, how is this going to end kind of deal. And obviously he gets the receipt. There was one near fall where I was like, wait a minute. There was one near fall where I was like, "Are they?" Gonna- I, I, and this, and everything's in sur- subject to interpretation. We can look at the same thing and see two different things. You saw a near fall. I never even blinked. I never, in my wildest <laughs> dreams, thought that Wargo was going to win the title off of Samoa Joe. Here's the thing: spot. I'm a Mark. I am too. <laughs> um, 
I was like, well, it's they called it big business, and it was the second segment. I was like, are they going to do something? Are they going to make this like a big show, like really shake things up? But that was the only that was the only reason I thought that it even would have happened. Yeah. I don't have to defend myself for mar- for thinking yeah, that it be, might have been be, near fall. Be a mark, motherfucker. I'm just saying for me, I Thank never you. blinked. I'll just say this. As great as it was to see Swerve come out, and at that point it was the, the biggest pop of the night, and in my opinion, I don't care what Sasha Mercedes, that was great, but when Swerve came out, that motherfucker was like, Row! I'll just say this. It was so quick when he came out. I felt bad for Wardlow because it was literally like, can you hurry up and get out of the ring so we can get some real business in? It was literally, it didn't even have time to breathe that Wardlow had lost and you can get, you know, start giving his RIP speech. It was just like, all right, great. You know, he keeps making his speech and then the music comes on. Get off the stage, motherfucker. Swerve's coming out. That's what it felt like to me. Um, so we're going to see what's maybe the best match we've ever seen. Are we going to see a Swerve title change? I think there's a very good possibility of it. If you don't, I mean, it's not the end of the world, but it is. It would hurt Swerve a little bit. I just, I'll I, th- say it I, like that. I agree with that. I think it would hurt him. Um, the little vignette before the match. One last thing about Wardlow. I don't know why I want to talk about Wardlow so much, but there was well, there was something that have the vignette before the match where Adam Cole explained why Wardlow hung out with oh, them. Yeah. I was it. like, why didn't you guys do this a month ago? <laughs> like, it was like so actual story time with Adam Cole. Right. Yeah, but why'd you hate it? It should have been Wargo to be the one saying it. I mean, don't get me wrong. Adam uh. Cole did it, did it justice. And I get what you're saying. But Wargo had did such a good job talking up to this point. If this is going to be the way he goes out, let him talk one more time. Ah, I liked it. I thought I'm it was. I, I, I like thought it. it added a little bit of context to why Wardlow's hanging out with the fucking undisputed kingdom. God, that I, I really hate that name. I think I hate undisputed kingdom more than Swerve in Our Glory. Ooh, it is pretty bad. <laughs> That's saying a lot. I mean, undisputed elite was stupid too. Why is everything? Why is it got to be undisputed something? Undisputed elite was cool. This is just a queer, just. It's like in multiplicity when, like, each okay, Michael perfect. Keaton just gets dumber and stupider and dumber and stupider. <laughs> it's like every time Adam Cole starts hanging out with somebody else, it's got to be undisputed yeah. that. It's like undisputed elite was the gay one, and undisputed kingdom was, like, the retarded one. Yeah, the one that's, like, the one that, like, shaves his tongue. <laughs> I know you're not supposed to say retarded, but it made the joke funny. Hey, um, uh, anyway. do you know my biggest problem with multiplicity as a movie is? Not it's enough Andy Michael McDowell is terrible. Not enough Michael Keaton's. <laughs> yeah. It, Big Michael, Michael, Michael Keaton, Keaton fan. Would, if Michael Keaton would have played if Andy McDowell's character was Michael Keaton and it was just <laughs> Michael Keaton's all the way down. <laughs> <laughs> I got your Mrs. Doubtfire right here, motherfucker. I really like that movie. Uh, yeah. That's funny. Yeah, it's good. Um uh there's a trios match, uh, which uh, was I mean the talent in this match, uh, it was the elite uh, versus uh, Eddie Kingston and Death Triangle, uh, which, you know, they have, like, some history uh, already. Like, uh, Eddie Kingston's kind of, like, he kind of subbed in uh, Death after, like, Pac was injured with, like, the Death Triangle thing, so that was pretty cool. Uh, I don't know if it was before this or after this, but I do, do not want to forget uh, that Alex Marvez was backstage talking to uh, the elite. <laughs> it was before, <laughs> and it was Matt. It was Matt's birthday, and Alex gives the microphone to Okada, and he says, "You know, Eddie Kingston, Penta, uh, Pack, I'm coming for you." Oh, and it's Matt's birthday. He's like, "Tell Matt happy birthday," and uh, Marvez is like, "Oh, happy birthday," and Okada's like, "Nope." Sing it. <laughs> and he like just <laughs> leers over him. Like Okada's a big dude. He just leers over Marvez and basically forces him to sing Matt Jackson Happy Birthday. Uh, this is just brilliant Here's heel stuff. And I just wish that I could chew gum. As, or I could wish I could do anything as good as Matt Jackson chews gum. 
just the, he, you just want to punch him right in the mouth and have watch the gum fly out. He chews gum so obnoxiously. He, yeah, he chews gum he like heels. a heel. It's so good. He chews like, gum like, like Pete Carroll. Ugh. <laughs> Shawn, Michaels. <laughs> Shawn Michaels used to do the same stuff. Mm. It's like it's, it's subtle, but it's it's so so good. It's a good uh, but anyway, this match was good. It's so a little smirk on his face on top of it. But yeah, go ahead. I mean, the match was great. This match was gr- this match was great. I, we're gonna have to start calling the Chad Gable underused, underrated Beaver the the Penta uh, underused, underrated beaver because penta goes out there he's a borderline jobber who's out there just putting on clinics every single match gives it his all every single match and he's so good and so crisp love penta this is a you know in the match with all these people in it, this is a penta appreciation post from your boy <laughs> <laughs> no i i agree with uh three beer on this with oh, i didn't see the okada heel run in new japan so this okada is newish to me at least character wise and when he stood over marvez and made him sing i started laughing out loud i was like yeah they got me that right you know what's weird though got my is i never thought about okada as a baby face in new japan though i I always kind of thought him as a baby face how about you the crowd got the crowd got behind it when we first started like the podcast and first started watching in earnest um you know the crowd was behind him because he was so good but he was still that he was still kind of smarmy, cocky. Um, he didn't do a lot of baby face stuff. Um, he's just kind of been that, that smug, rich character guy. Uh, but I feel like he's leaning into it even heavier because well, I, one thing I love is this with this American audience. And um, Okada came in, and it's not just like, oh, we have Okada. He's a generational talent. Um, you know, we're going to set up so many dream matches. They put him in a group with a shtick and like they gave him a story and they are, you know, they're doing really good week to week stuff with them. Um, it's not just, Hey, Okada's here. Mm. <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry. Tried to get that muted, but, um, yeah, um, it is, uh, it is quite good. And same kind of thing. Like I was saying, we don't really need more heels, but like, Holy shit. Uh, with Osprey being a baby face and at the, that level, and also with a uh, you know potential for Hangman to come back and be a baby face, uh, we'll probably be doing okay. But uh, it is very heel heavy. There's a lot of heat. Uh, and to Bill's point with uh, Penta, I feel like all the Mexican wrestlers kind of get that rap in AEW because Tony knows that they'll get over and they'll stay over because they're so sensational. And so uh, their win loss matter records don't matter nearly as much. And so he beats a lot of them. I was going to say that the CML CMLL partnership sounded good, but now that I'm looking at it, a lot of them do do take the L in situations uh, like you're talking about uh, Jericho beating Teton on uh, collision was one of those where I was, I was, you know, become a T-Time fan since uh, last year's Best of the Super Juniors and uh, watching him lose that match to Jericho, Lionheart Chris Jericho, and I'm putting Lionheart in uh, quotation bars. That motherfucker wasn't flipping around. Shit, he did a moonsault <laughs> once. Give me the, get the fuck out of here. Jericho's ice cold, man. He's gotten cold Dude. real quick. Yeah, you really, uh, I mean, I, I was going to talk about that. Um, but we was booing about his now. ass. <laughs> and... You know, I get why, you know, he might go over somebody like, you know, Teton. Same kind of thing, right? Uh, Teton's going to get over. He's in the ring with Jericho, who's a legit legend, like blah, 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 right? At the same time, you know, and also Tony's like, what did I pay you, Teton? I paid you like five grand. Uh, I, I got to pay, I got to shell a couple million dollars to Jericho this year. So, like, <laughs> uh, so um, at the same time, uh, how can we miss you if you don't go away? Just fucking go away. He's on every show. He was on. The goddamn, he was on uh, commentary on Rampage. He was wrestling on Collision, and now he's here with another younger talent trying to give them a rub, give them the same Jericho rub that he's tried to give all these other talents, and it worked with a lot of them, but it's the same stick. He teams up with whoever he thinks is, like, on the rise. Like, he will attach himself to them like a, like a vampire um, and try. he tries to get them over, but at the same time, he's trying to stay relevant. And I feel like the shtick is up. 
and he needs to do a, another reinvention. Jericho's good at reinventions. It's time. Jason? No guy has spoken. I mean, at a certain point, you know, this – this thing with Hook, it's just it didn't even, it didn't even make it made kind of sense on Collision, but then watching them team together on uh, Dynamite and they beat the Gates of Agony, that's just you know that's my rule right there. This team never really is competed as a team, but then they beat an established tag team right there. That strikes two and three as far as I'm concerned, Ricky Bobby. That was it. I'm done with Jarrah Hook. It's all, why is it always Jarrah fill in the blank? Jarrah Show, Jarrah Hook. Get the Jarrah Hook your ass up out of here at this hook point. Hook a co. <laughs> okay. At a <laughs> certain a point, it is over. It is time for Chris Jericho to go step it away and let other guys step up. Where the fuck is Ricky Starks? Okay, Ricky Starks, I said it at the Beefers. That was my Beefer promo of the year just because Ricky Starks was so fucking disappointed because, once again, his moment was taken away from him. Where the fuck is Ricky Starks at now? But we got Chris Jericho up front. Get the fuck out of here with this shit. Yeah, he is ice cold. Um, They don't even turn the music down so that the fans can sing Judas anymore. Uh, They just play Judas. (laughs) No, he's been coming out to his old Lionheart music. As of late, yeah. This oh, week, yeah, this yeah. And, week the, and that is way more for him than it is for anybody else. He okay. just wants to go out and wrestle these guys. It is, all right, it was cute for a couple shows. It's like, get if you if this is what you're going to be doing, get out of here. Stick it to, <laughs> oh, just put it on Rampage. No. Put it on Rampage. Zach is right. Take a break, dude. That's fine, too. I don't need to see Chris Jericho challenge Hook. Is, does he even go on the cruises anymore? <laughs> he just He's on TV. <laughs> Honestly, you know what Jericho needs to do? He needs to go back to WWE. Oh, no. Yeah, that'd be great. That'd be great. Yeah. Him versus Fandango. He did so much great shit for AEW. Um, but I feel like it's inevitable that he's going to end up back at wwe anyway he'll do this hall of fame run you know like whatever um but um yeah not that he's needed there or anything but he ain't needed in aw anymore either i don't think yeah he's just i hate to say this he's just kind of taking up space now more and more space every day okay he's like a he's like a fucking seventh year senior i'm not going to disagree with you that he eventually goes back it just might i didn't think we'd be talking about it this quickly we just literally went from go what away. What have you done for me lately? <laughs> boom, ba, dum, boom, boom, Ooh, yeah. Boom, ba, dum, boom, boom. What have you done for me lately? Boom, ba, dum, I set up the first boom, boom. Ooh, yeah. I hope that you built this company. <laughs> go ahead, three <laughs> um, I, uh Jay White versus Derby Allen. Um not often that Jay White gets to be the big guy in the match. <laughs> Holy, <laughs> Holy somebody, shit. but man, uh, Darby's just insane. Um, you know, Jay White, you know, did a lot of beating the shit out of him. Mm. Darby did a coffin drop from the top to the apron, and he like barely touched. He just grazed the corner of the apron Ugh. before he slammed into the floor. Um, and he's supposed to go climb Mount Everest in a couple weeks, but uh, yeah, he ends up out, like. Kid. Yeah, he ends up uh, taking Jay White's finisher, getting the one, two, three, which he doesn't lose that often. Appropriate, you know, he's on his way out. Elevate Jay White some because Darby is, um, you know, a big big deal in AEW. And um, him and the, the guns are beating the shit out of Darby. Uh, claimed who was in part of, the, you know, the Bang Bang Gang, and Daddy has come down to kind of make the save, or at least be like, yo, yo, you guys are, like, being crazy. Like, chill out. <laughs> and, um yeah, uh, Jay White hits that he has with a chair, and uh, the Bang Bang for their gang is no more. We hardly knew ye, um, but I mean, this is this should have happened. I don't know, three four weeks ago. Um, <laughs> they did nothing the whole time they were together. Like I said, maybe they sold the shirt. So they didn't do shit. I don't think they they had like maybe two matches. Um, so I think something else we'll probably see in. At Dynasty in St. Louis is Bang Bang Scissor Gang versus Acclaimed and Daddy Ass. Hopefully to unify these belts. They were born in St. Louis and they'll die in St. Louis. 
gross. Were they born in St. Louis? Is that where they did the scissoring? Yeah, it was at the collision. The collision that I was at was where it happened. Gross. The scissoring. That sounds like an M. Night Shyamalan movie. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I was there. Remember, I was like, I can't believe oh, yeah, yeah. how yeah, over this shit was. was. Yeah, it was real that. over in the room. I was uh, shocked. Um, Those uh, scissor, like the ends of the scissor pelts, like on the pink. That's one of the most offensive things. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's bad. got to go to. Uh, just keep the ROH tiles. You can throw those other motherfuckers away. Um, first singles match for Jay White in 2024. I was like, I mean, that's what another. The fuck? They got Okado, Osprey, and Jay White. I, I like, come old. on. If you're Jay White, I'd be like, dude, what the fuck? Didn't I just get away from you two jokers? Now you over here, man. God damn. Yep. Um, they also have a Bushi, not that he's any good anymore, but uh, they've got like all of like the 2010 IWGP champion stuff like Naito. <laughs> Naito. <And> Shingo. <laughs> I'm not saying if you Jay White, I'd be like, man, I'm so sick of seeing you two motherfuckers. First thing was going to match for Jay White in 2024. I felt damn near fell on the floor when I heard that. But then I thought about it. I was like, damn, he is right. It is the first singles match. So he kind of needed this match. The perfect guy, to, I won't say the perfect guy, but one of the guys that's basically Teflon at this point is Darby. So you can let Darby, you know, do some crazy shit and have Jay White get the win, which he desperately needed. The more and more I watch this match, I'm like, man, if Jay White don't win this shit, I don't know what the fuck you're going to do with his ass now. You break up the Bang Bang Scissors gang sorry brett i love you they just got aw got your money he bought with one of the uh, bang bang scissor gang shirts and now they broke up so now he's getting the shirt and now aw's got the money that's why i always wait before i start buying some shit neither here nor there i spent money on worse things <laughs> but not much <laughs> <laughs> But I'll just say this. I'm glad it is over. But please, for the love of God, now that the Bang Bang Scissor Gang is dead, can we start building Jay White back up? He is no. There is no reason in the world for him to be a part of a trios championship team. Sorry, not sorry. I know Okada just did it. We ain't talking about Okada. We talking about Jay White, goddammit. It is time for him to get back on track. And if this is the way to do it, then I'm all for it. But if this is just a way to extend this bullshit angle that you got going on, I'm down. I'm not down for that. Well, I wonder what Jay White was hoping for when he came over to America. And if I wonder if his hopes and dreams ever included feuding with daddy ass and his two idiot sons. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man! Dude, I'm talking about Jay White. Doing before they got in with the acclaim, uh, he was doing good work because he, you know, with him and Juice, and then he managed to like actually get the guns over, which is something they hadn't been able yeah, to do on their own. And he had that match with MJF that was good. Um, yeah, I'm not imagining that, am I? That was no, a pa- that was a pay per view match. You're not imagining yeah. that. Nope. Not at so all. I just wish he was doing more. I wish more for him. But, like I said, somebody's going to take the fall when you start bringing Okada, Osprey, filling the blank over. Jay White right now is one of those guys where I'm like, okay, it's great to see you back. Now, you know, can we do something with this motherfucker or what? Would you have um, Would you have preferred Jay White or Adam Page in that Adam Page in that triple threat match at uh, the pay per view? Like, what if the if if it was Jay White's uh, feuding with Swerve and Joe was the title holder? Wouldn't you? Basically, what I'm asking is, who do you think's better, Jay White or Adam Page? Oof. Um. I think I know Zach's answer. Shit, shit. shit. I'm gonna say Jay White still. I'm, I just Jay White is, is just to me more of a a believable heel. You don't like Jay White when you see him. You want to punch him. You root against him. Adam Page, for his credit, can play both sides. He's got. I really would like to see him dig into the heel side more against Word, but that's probably not going to happen. I like. I'll go with Jay White. Zach, who's your answer? That's tough. Uh, I think they are. As far as two guys, uh, they're pretty equal, um, like skill wise. They both have strengths and weaknesses. I feel like um, if this makes sense. Uh, I feel like Jay White gets it more, and I feel like Adam Page has it more. Like I feel like Adam Page has a little bit more natural, like um, maybe more athletic. He's bigger. He's kind of got 
you know, the traditional pro wrestling thing, um, he like has it. Whereas Jay White just gets it and he really gets by on hard work and uh, just, you know, kicking ass. And he's, he's a much better promo. I think that uh, Adam Page can have a good match with anyone. And I'm sure that Jay White can too. But Adam Page is a bit more, I guess his style is a little bit more dynamic in ring. Jay White is kind of methodical a lot of times. Um, which is cool. That's his style. Um, when I'm when I'm wanting to watch a big match, that's going to be real dramatic. I think that Paige is probably the better wrestler, but I think Jay White is just screams top of the card, higher up the card than Adam Page does. I mean, they're both they both can main event anything, but Jay White seems like a bigger deal in my head. I, I, to me, it's, it's you could split hairs. Either one could be at the top of the card, and obviously they both have. Um, for me, Jay White drags me in because, like I said, his character is so heelish that you want to see his him get his comeuppance. Now, um, speaking of uh, heels, we had Willow Nightingale versus Rio. Man, a couple of natural heels if I ever saw. Him. Jesus fucking Christ. He just hate both of these women so much. I've never considered myself a misogynist, but I just hate these women. Um, no, uh, they are both phenomenal baby faces. Uh, they were in the main event of Dynamite. Um, that's kind of surprising, but it's almost, I don't know, it was like a token thing because like Sasha debuted, like, oh, we're going to have, we're reigniting the women, you know, thing because we're going to put the women in the main event Then we're going to have Mercedes at the at the end. Uh, anyway, um, they had a good match. Um, Willow ended up uh, getting the pin over Rio. Uh, but yeah, big person, little person match. Um, Rio is tiny and not even just next to Willow Nightingale. Like she was backstage next to Mercedes, and Mercedes is not big at all. Mm-hmm. And she was like towering over Rio. Um, but anyway, uh, match went. Match was good. Lights went out. Uh, Julia and Sky Blue are there, and um, they're you know there to you know be heels. Uh, but uh, Mercedes Monet's music hit. Uh, Sky Blue charged up the ramp, and Mercedes laid her out. Oof. Um, she smacked her down, and uh, there was a little face off with Julia, and then uh, Julia got Mercedes' new finisher. I don't know what it's called. Um, I don't really like it that much, probably just because I've, I've seen a botch. Like I've only seen a couple of Mercedes matches since she left WWE. It's got then, a it's it's in the money vein. The bank, name of it is bankrupt or something like that. I think bankrupt. Maybe it is bankrupt. Something. It's it, it, yeah. It, yeah. It's in the money vein. I just can't think of what it is off the top of my head. But Julia took it about as good as I've seen anybody take that. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, yeah, and uh, the show went off with. Uh, her doing the uh, doing like her dance and she did like the whole like CEO thing, which was very reminiscent of Brett Baker's DMV. So I don't know if that was intentional, uh, but yeah, uh, pretty good episode of Dynamite. It was a big show. Uh, we were led to believe it was going to be a big show. It delivered. Um, what do you guys think? I didn't think of that DMD thing until you just said it and. God knows I've been asking where the hell Britt Baker's been for quite some time. I don't necessarily. He's hanging out with Kate Middleton. <laughs> I don't necessarily think that Mercedes needed it per se. I think, honestly, she's so over that the crowd would chant whatever it, they wanted to chant in whatever city they wanted, it, and it would it, she would still be over. CEO is just, you know, just easy. It's, you know, goes to her character. You can get the crowd hot right away. I get that part. I, I honestly don't think she needed neither here nor there. I will agree with on three beer on the fact of Julia Hart taking the uh, finisher as best as I've ever seen it. We have seen a Ben Botch. This is about as good as it gets. Ultimately, I guess my biggest problem with this whole thing is when you have an AEW World Championship match on the card, to me, that's the main event. I don't care what you, whatever little angle you got with Mercedes going on, that shit can wait. Joe Wardlow should have been the main event figure it out from that point on you just have mercedes monet come out in that first segment and that's it you know you can have a dark match afterwards or some shit happen after it goes off the air but 
you know, Rio and Willow Nightingale being in the main event just telegraphed, okay, well, she's Sounds coming out. Gonna, yeah, you know. top. Um, I think that the miss is putting her together with Willow Nightingale right off the bat. If you put a gun to my head and ask me to explain the story between Julia Hart, uh, what's her name, Julia Sky Hart, Blue. Sky Blue, Willow Nightingale, and Stokely Hathaway and Chris Statlander. Put a gun to my head. I do a wrestling podcast, and I watch all these segments. <laughs> if you put a gun to my head to explain what's going on with them, I would not be able to tell you. I think they've done a pretty decent job explaining that Three Beer, do you agree? Um, yeah, I mean, it's been okay. I, I, I understand it. It's not particularly good or anything. I was going to say, I'm not a, get a fan of the angle. Sasha but... Banks, or Mercedes Monet should come in and should be in a program with Tony Storm right off the bat. You don't have to slow play her. You don't have to have her going for the TBS championship. I don't, think she's, not, I don't think she's going the, for the, the women's championship. The, the women's division is a lot thinner than the men's, and Tony Storm doesn't have a lot of challengers that seem credible right now considering the work that she's doing. So put her up against Mercedes Monet. Let Mercedes Monet win it or let her chase it for a while. Like I said, I don't A, I don't think she's teaming up with Willow. Ultimately, I think she turns on Willow. B. So you think she's going to be a heel soon? Yeah, I just the the look at the end, you know, it wasn't like you know they were you know hugging it out or anything. There's still some beef that needs to be cooked. Okay, I'm no, just, I think that she's gonna feud with Willow Nightingale. I guess I just wasn't thinking about her turning heel. What do you think, Zach? Um, I think they will probably have that match down the way. Um, I don't know how soon it'll be. I don't, I don't think any of that stuff really kind of telegraphed any kind of programs or anything. I think it was just there to show some delineation of like baby face heel um, and to, you know, get some, you know, get some TV time. I don't know if there's going to be a Julia program. I do think that she will get her win back over Willow uh, at some point. Agreed. But yeah, we'll see. But I think some, I think she should see somebody big, if not Tony Storm, I think it should be Britt Baker or somebody like on that level. Um, you don't have a lot like, of those, uh, though. Paige, you know, or what, you know, whatever her name is. Like she's she's a big star. Um, you know, uh, she's getting paid a lot of money, presumably from AEW. Like, put her in a program, have her have her lose to Mercedes. I'll just say this: if you do Soraya, wasn't Soraya in the when Soraya got hurt real bad as Paige? It was against Sasha Banks, right? Ding 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 ding! ding. Circle gets the square. Yep. You stole my Sasha's thunder. In so that movie. so that's. The only, I guess, negative, if you want to deal with that, if you're going to go down that road, no, either lean into it or don't even fuck with it at all. That's your two options if you want to go down that Soraya Mercedes Monet path. For me, like I said last week, and I'm going to double down again this week, Soraya is not on the level of Mercedes Monet, even, even on AEW right now. Even when Soraya's won the title, Mercedes Monet just feels bigger. And there's no reason in the well, world for yeah, them to cross I mean, paths. That's yeah, it's not even close. Mercedes Monet is the biggest star they have in the women's division now. Automatically, she's a bigger star than Tony Storm. Yep, they she has fanatical no, following. Yeah, no um, argument. Yep, fucking Sasha stands. <laughs> They're gonna be back. God damn! I'm glad I'm not on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> um. So uh, outside of that, we don't have to go into – we've done a lot on the big show of AEW, but I will say that folks should go out of their way to watch Brian Nielsen versus Shane Taylor, the open collision. Yeah, it was they awesome. they have not watched that, it was fucking great. It was fucking awesome. Shane Taylor was smacking the shit out there, too. I'm like, God yeah, I'm, damn. Yeah, I'm, I'm into Shane Taylor now. Dude, that, and I'm, I'm going to be that guy for 30 – no, I'm I not going to say I t- it's not the I told you so speech. I'm going to be the, the Shane Taylor deserves his flowers for being a borderline. Well, shit, at this point, he is a jobber. God bless him. He's He lost to Keith Lee. I'm like, Keith Lee ain't been around the hot minute. He's that jobber. was the one guy he could have beat and didn't beat. Everybody else, I'll let fine. He's jobber to the stars, though. I mean, okay, that's what I was going to say. He's jobber to Blackpool Combat Club. <laughs> okay. That's a fine position. Fine. There you go. Shouldn't have never lost to Keith Lee. I'm going to stand on that shit. Everybody else, fair enough. 
Um, if you lose the wheel with you, that's going to be it. I'm going to lose my shit the on this one. The only thing that loses to Keith Lee should be like a coffee cake. <laughs> <laughs> you could not have picked a funnier food to say. <laughs> I like coffee cake, man. Shit, I'll back no, I, it. Yeah, I but that is, that, that is the funniest <laughs> food there for the joke, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't put no coffee cake in front of me. Shit, you come back. Nobody with says a coffee cake anymore. Um, I said it twice. The other thing I was going to say is that next week we have an I quit match between Edge and uh, Christian. Uh, I guess Edge loves these matches. Didn't he have a match? Didn't he just have a match at WWE where they were getting ready to uh, uh, concerto Beth Phoenix and he said I quit? I mean, that yeah, was a, that was against Finn like Balor or something. Yes. Yep. 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 Got Jesus. Finn back on the map. It was, that, no, that was last good. man standing in I quit matches. They're just. Uh, uh, I know that's that's not your thing. I, it's not. I'll just say I this. I think with these two guys, it'll be great. Okay, and that's great. you, you kind of stole my thunder on this. My expectation for this match after these first two, I mean, it's basically going to be all hell is breaking loose for the the time. They had started announcing these jokers, and they start walking to the ring to the time they actually ring the bell to finish the match. It's going to be bonkers. You got that and Kingston versus Okada for the Connell crown next week. Those are going to be two really good matches, both to, uh, matches God to look damn, forward to. that's a big fucking dynamite. I thought they would wait on Eddie and Okada until, you know, in my heart of hearts. No, man. He I looks was, like a cokehead. He, he cokehead booking, man. I was hoping that they, he would Tony wait. Khan's the CEO <laughs> of that. Trust me. I was like, okay, <laughs> I see them cross the pass. Just wait a month, motherfucker. Can't you wait a month? Nah, they're going to do it next week. Um, who you guys got? Okada or Eddie to win, uh, to win next week? Okada. I feel like unless they don't really do a lot of non-finishes, um, they could do that. But unless they do that, it's got to be Okada. I agree. I think Eddie is, uh, has taken it as far as he can take it. Uh, he'll still be he'll still be ROH and New Japan Strong Champion too, because it's only for that one belt. It's only it's for the for one belt. Around. Okay, yeah. now see what the fuck? Did that? Say? I don't understand that. I don't understand that at all. But that's what it is. Okay, now now what was the point with the? Uh, I mean, that's a why, great question, why, Jason. Why do we do the t- the whole tournament? Jason, that's the correct question. Oh man. Okay. See, I thought. Go ahead, because I'm I'm going I'm going around. And That's basically, old. Okada shouldn't be losing that match. Okada should not. When you have a guy like Okada, of which is only one, and it's Okada, but when you have Okada, <laughs> you can't have him come in and lose matches. Like, not, like I, I kind of wish that I kind of wish no that disrespect. he I kind of wish that he hadn't needed that low blow uh, on Wednesday night. But I digress. No. I th- the low blow establishes Okada as a heel because as soon as uh, Nick low blowed him, Okada was right there and was like, Raymaker time, boom. And I was like, damn. A, a, I was like, shit, that was smooth. But B, I was like, damn, that's some heel shit too. So I get that. I don't get the whole Continental Crown bullshit. That's going to do it for our two count. One, two, three. Why did you- Jesus Christ. Why did he do the tournament? All right. So... <sighs> You know, there's like two Speaking half. Speaking of why there's, they do the tournament. There's like two half ones. Uh, so, New Japan Cup is happening. Uh, I asked Jason not to spoil it for me until we were on the air so we could get Zach and I's real-time reactions. I don't, Zach, are you? do you know what's happened? I know you haven't watched it. No, um, I've been really behind. I've been really busy with work, and I just, I've been barely able to keep up with uh, my personal life. I want to say that the March 8th show was really good. Um, Oleg Bolton versus Hikaleo. Hikaleo goes over. I like uh, that Bolton kid. He seems like the real deal. Uh, seems almost like a Tom Lawler-like guy, but he's uh, Kazakhstani, <laughs> and he looks fucking really fucking dangerous. Uh, that was cool, though. Uh, Gabriel Kidd versus Callum Newman, also really good. Gabriel Kidd, very fun to watch. Callum Newman is this poor guy. I mean, I hope he's getting his. I hope he doesn't turn out like Harold Miner, calling him Lil Osprey, and they talk about Will Osprey a lot with him, and uh, that's a tough guy to be compared to. And then uh, Shingo versus Uemura was also 
a very good match. Um, I would, thought it would have been cool if Uemura would have gotten the win, like a huge upset in the first round. Uh, but they didn't pull the trigger. Shingo goes over. Jason, what did you think of these matches? Um, I agree on Oleg Bolton. Uh, I think he's a, a future star on the rise. God forbid, with his size, if he gets a, a submission, uh, kind of hold on him, it, he's just going to be fucking dangerous. He had a really good match with Zack Sabre Jr. for the world TV title. So if you haven't seen that, I would say go check that out. Gabe Kidd, uh, I think is going to be another one on the rise. If God forbid, if they actually had a mid card title that they actually gave a shit about, I would love to see Gabe Kidd get that mid card title. Neither here nor there. I think he's a, he's gotten better and better since he's come back from his um, mental uh, history problems or whatever the case may be. I thought he looked really strong here. Cal Newman is saddled as the heir apparent to Will Ospreay. I get it. Looks like Will acts like Will. I don't. It's just too early to be talking to him and Will Ospreay in the same sentence. Shingo Takagi uh, and Yurimura, I thought was the best match up to this point. Jeff Cobb and Suji, I thought was just as good, if not better, depending on what you like. But who won uh, Jeff Cobb and Suji? Uh, Suji won that match. A little bit of a surprise, uh, just because I, I was thinking this might be the time for Jeff Cobb to get uh, pushed. It was it was a really solid match. Like I said, to me, Suji Cobb and Shingo uh, Uramura have been the two best matches of the tournament so far. Um, this is not. It's been a weird tournament, just from my perspective, because I'm really the only one that has been unfortunately lucky enough or unlucky enough in this case, to watch it. I wanted to call it the, instead of the New Japan Cup, it's the Mid-Japan Cup because it's been Ooh. a bunch of mid-matches uh, highlighted by your AKA this week of Tangaloa trying to do a 619 <laughs> unsuccessfully, not once, but twice. Thank you, uh, Three Beer, for that video. He I, tried it twice? He tried it again. After he fucked it up the first time, he go, he was like, okay, let me, he stepped back, and I was like, no. No, that's when in the captions somebody was like Tango will go it's like no baby no Zach this is a serious question would your attempt at a 619 look better or worse than Tango Loa's <laughs> I'm genuinely curious <laughs> I know I'd love to see it if you haven't seen Tango Loa's uh, 619 attempt, I suggest you look it up on Twitter or something. It is yeah. it is pretty funny. AJ Francis yeah. is like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the uh, the typical reaction to that is, like Jesus said, the, oh, no, baby, what is he doing? <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that again. Um, so who, who's left in New Japan Cup? Uh, the surprise of surprises, unfortunately, depending on how you look at it, Jack Perry has advanced to the quarterfinals. He has linked himself up, obviously, with uh, House of Torture, uh, won his first round match against Shota Umino, which was the official turn. Then he had to face Yano in the second round match, which was a big just fuckery fuck fest, uh, beats Yano to go on to the quarterfinals. Uh, other guys that have advanced, Shingo, I'm sorry, uh, Chingo did uh, advance. I apologize. He beat Gabe Kidd uh, yesterday. Evil has advanced to the uh, quarterfinals as well. David Finley and Goto have advanced to the quarterfinals. So you have Sonata, Jack Perry, Goto, David Finley, Shingo, and Evil all in the quarter. I'm sorry, uh, Yoda Suji and Ren Narita. Those eight gentlemen, Ren Narita, Suji, Jack Perry, Sonata, Finley, Godo, Evil, and Shingo. Those eight gentlemen are Who in the quarterfinals. Who beat Sabre Jr.? I don't think he's wrestled his next round match. He has not wrestled his okay. second round match. Okay, all right. So he's still in it. He's still in it. Okay. Um, Zach, you still going with Shingo? Yeah, that's my that's my guy. I'll, still st I'll stick with it. Jason, you still going with... Who was your pick? Shingo. Yeah, okay. And I took Zack Sabre Jr. Um, okay, and then uh, I don't know if you guys watch NXT this week. <laughs> Zach, did you get a chance to watch it? Uh, no, I read the recap, but uh, I did not get a chance to watch it. Okay, so they had a couple of vignettes with the family and Ilya Dragunov that were very um, 
m- mob centric, I guess, and a little goofy. I ain't no guess to it. Motherfucker, uh, he walked. Is this uh, is this confirmation of my worst fears or what I said about the family and that it's not a main event gimmick? Should Ilya Dragunov be in these skits? This is Cornette's Corner. Uh, wasn't a, the biggest fan of the segment. I don't necessarily get what they were trying to convey. Uh, if you're going to kidnap the champ, I mean, why, why not put some boots to him? I mean, what the fuck? I, I just, I don't get it. I ultimately, it felt like Tony was being painted as a heel, but then... You know, I'm not going to touch you. You can walk back to safety or whatever. So, you know, a heel with a heart, I don't know. It just, I don't necessarily think they know exactly how they want to build Tony on this road to stand and deliver. Zach, same question. No. (laughs) Thank you. Uh, Sean Spears faces Rich Holland. Sean Spears beats Rich Holland. Uh by DDTing him onto a chair or something like that. Seems weird that like Sean Spears is back. They put him in this thing with Rich Holland and like there's he doesn't cut a promo about where he's been or why he's back or anything. He's just it's like he never went away. It's like here's Sean Spears and now he's just on the show. What do you think about it, Jason? Uh to me it reminds me of uh, it's a Star Wars analogy, Darth Vader slash the Emperor trying to seduce Luke over to the dark side of the Force. I don't know what exactly is supposed to be happening. If Rich is supposed to be unleashed, now what? I mean, are they going to be heels together? Or is Rich how going to be running rampant? I, it just, it's I want one them of those to be heels together. Make, I would like to think that's the, the case, but, I mean, I don't know. I, I didn't like Rich Howland to begin with, so this – Angle is just kind of like, okay, where are we going with it? I'm along for the ride, but unwillingly so. Zach, what do you think? I uh, I like Sean Spears better when he was a chair sexual. <laughs> <laughs> that chair he's walking around with is the cuck chair. <laughs> That's where he watches people have sex with his wife. Well, man, sign me up. Yeah, I know. She's something. Um, it looks like we're... Headed towards a Good Brothers versus Wolf Dogs match at Stand and Deliver on WrestleMania Saturday. There's so much shit going on that Stand and Deliver has to happen at like 10 o'clock in the morning. Oh, shit. <laughs> fucking WrestleMania Sorry, Saturday. Sorry, guys. You got to get up early. I will be watching it, though. Um, do the Good Brothers take it off the Wolf Dogs if that's what ends up happening, Jason? <laughs> Why you go ask me some shit like that? You know what I want to say. Hell no. Uh, no, if they, if they don't go down the NXT and win these times. Do the Wolf Dogs pass your uh, tag team test? Oh, God. Yes? Question mark? Zach, did you think that he was going to take that long to answer that? <laughs> no. I thought you had a clear de- delineation. It was like a Pavlovian response. but Yeah, um, as long as they have a team name, they're a team. <laughs> I thought that was the criteria, yeah. I'm sorry, you know, it's not bleeding Sweden, but I mean, okay, fair enough. It's wolf dogs. <laughs> bleeding in Sweden. <laughs> it's so good. Trick Williams cuts his uh, welcome back promo. You know, over babyface. Uh, I thought Noam Dar coming out at the end was kind of weird, but whatever. You you don't want to do Carmelo right away. You do uh, Noam to come out. You do the uh, Lash Legend uh, little angle, whatever. Trick uh, Trick and Melo will see each other next week. Melo will attack Trick after the match, during the match at some point, and then I'll set up the stand and deliver uh, match to the Ultimately, we'll have Trick, I would assume, go over. Melo goes up, same way with Braun Breaker. He's already, you know, in kayfabe style. He's signed with uh, SmackDown, so he's got a spot to go. It's just, you know, finishing up, in my head, storylines for both guys. Zach, any thoughts about that? I, um, as far as NXT goes, I haven't been able to watch nearly as much as I'd like to, but it is. It is bonkers to me that Trick Williams and Carmelo Hayes are just going to have a match and stand and deliver. Feels like there should be more to it. That seems like the 
program driving the whole show for me, really. Yeah, it's still the most intriguing thing. Trick's been gone for a little while, and Carmel's just been cutting heel, heel promo shit. But, um, yeah, uh, NXT. Uh, there's a lot of story on NXT. Every Roxanne, st- <laughs> Roxanne flips heel. Fucking the whole Thea Hale, J.C. Jane thing, the Gigi Dolan, uh, Ariana Grande <laughs> thing. Like they have, they the Brooks and Jensen, hang on, hang on, hang Jensen on. and Briggs thing. <laughs> like they to, have a lot of stuff can, going on. Can we go back to Gigi Ariana for thirty seconds? How's a low blow gonna win that match? Is that what happened? It was a low blow from Gigi to Ariana. The low referee, blow in a women's match, huh? The referee catches it and calls the match and awards Ariana Grace the the uh, the match. Well, it can't feel good. <laughs> yeah, it's got it's still got to hurt. Like it's a different scenario, but I might get hit with the genitals. It's not okay. good. Zach, all I'm gonna say is <laughs> go, go back. Go, just if you just take two minutes out of your day and watch the reaction from both of them. It looks like they have testicles i mean literally like over the top reactions like woo, woo, woo. Yeah, I mean, she like, sells it she sold it like nobody's business while i was like wait how's that work <laughs> you gonna call the match Hang her on. body is wonderland <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna do it for our three count one two three uh no odds and ends really uh anything that you guys got uh, Calm before the storm. Yeah, I was getting ready to say it, it just feels like uh, everything's just kind of, you know, wrap it up to Dynasty AEW style. And then obviously uh, WrestleMania on the uh, the WWE side, it's, it's I, I know you guys say it all the time, but I'm going to say it. It's, this has just been an amazing time for wrestling. Even though New Japan is down, because all my boys are going to AEW, it's still just a, an amazing time to just watch wrestling across the board. And it's a great time to watch other wrestling. If you watch WWE primarily, pick your head over to AEW and vice versa, because, I mean, both shows have something to offer everybody. Oh, also, uh, in that same vein, um, I do love the Forbidden Door this year. It seems like we're going to get stardom and CMLL wrestlers, so it's not just New Japan, which is good because Tony has pretty much stolen the majority of New Japan's roster. But, um, you know, like uh, Mina Shirakawa is on ROH uh, for those tapings. I don't think it's aired yet. Um, yeah, she uh, she came over. Uh, she wrestled on Wednesday after after the show for an ROH show. And I think Azumi might be over here also. And well, Azumi is yeah. phenomenal. Yeah, that was going to say. I know she's over. She's if not over in the States, but has come over to the States. I did hear that. I'll just say this. The booking just needs to be somewhat even. <laughs> this just can't be all AEW motherfuckers running rapid. That's all this I'm is like ask. when the challenge only used to be real world and road rules people, but then they opened it up to all the other reality shows and just because they needed more talent. Look, I'm not... I'm not going to say. I think you could do stardom in AEW. I just thought just, it was an apt comparison. It, it, it very well could be. Let's see what this card presents, and then we let's come back and talk about it. I don't know the challenge. I know you guys watch it. Uh, you know, I haven't watched in a while, but I saw an ad for the new one, and uh, Leroy's back. Uh, you know, Leroy's my dog. So I might be watching so the new challenge. It? Huh? What is it? I, I don't even know what it is. Uh-oh. The challenge is it's the it used to be the real world road rules challenge where it was it's like it's like a reality show where they but the the athletic competitions are all pretty cool and they look really fun to do and like it's the same cast of characters like over and over and some people drop off from season to season other people add in new ones like oh who's on this season so like leo russ is on it right Leo Rush was on it one time. CM Punk was on the celebrity one one time where it was celebrities versus. Um, but Leo Rush went on not because he was on a reality show. It's because he was a wrestler. Like, they have, like, real athletes. Like, try at, like it's not it's not the real world. It's uh, it's better than that. It's not, it's not Wipeout? No, no, not at all. It's, it's like, it's more like Survivor. 
It's like there's cool. there's I lots so, there's I lots would, of strategy yeah, and shit. I would say that's a more uh, apt comparison. Yeah, but uh, anyway, we got some birthdays this week. Santino Morella is fifty. Uh, the Iron Sheik, R.I.P., would have been eighty-two. J.D. McDonough is thirty-four. <laughs> I love when J.D. McDonough cut that promo about how he was going to win the gauntlet, and it was like, no, you. I was about to say, man, you better sit your ass down somewhere. <laughs> like, that, like uh, they, well, we gotta give J.D. a vignette. We're giving everybody else a vignette. <laughs> so you got two minutes. He's like, I can beat Gunther. It's like, no, no you, you can't. can't. I tell you what, him and Gunther have had some battles yeah I know, in, uh, I know when he was jordan devlin stop, stop. Okay, yeah. okay i was getting ready to say over in uh germany i know they cross paths too but his character is not presented as somebody who can beat mm-hmm. gunther mjf no, his character is presented as somebody with fetal alcohol so. <laughs> god damn holy <laughs> shit you wait till the last minute to say some shit like that <laughs> <laughs> Zach, Real don't good. miss. Real good. Uh, MJF is 28. Samoa Joe is 45. Test, RIP, would have been 49. Rick the Model Martel, RIP, would have been 68. Oh, EC- EC3, RIP. Is- no, he's uh, no, he's still alive. He's still with us. He's 41. His career. Yeah, he, oh, damn. Uh, he's con- he's controlling his narrative. I don't know why we're why are we taking shots at EC three. I never did anything except for work hard. <laughs> this nigga taking BMR was like in the gym, like yeah. I'm I like EC three. Oh, no, you don't. Where we? <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, St. Louis's own Matt Seidel. 41, AJ Lee, 37, Sting, happy birthday. Hope you're enjoying that retirement. Hope his feet are up on a beach somewhere having a pina colada. Man, that motherfucker deserves a break after 65. that, man. Sting, he's got his face painted all over. <laughs> <laughs> are you Sting? No, no, no. Homicide is 47, and Matt Taven is 39. Rabbit fever. Hey, everybody, we know there's tons of podcasts to listen to, so we appreciate you listening to our podcast. For the family inside, Jack- for Brett Jager, Jack- for Lucha Chris, Jack- for Murray the Murray Man Murray, Jack- for Patriot Pat, for Jack- Tender Mahal, go Jack- to Wrestling at the Grand Dell, get Bitches. your tickets. Jack- uh, for Vice, Jack- for Two Beer Zach Pullman, Jack- for Jason Cornelius Bell, I am Bill Vagie, Jack- everybody, Black Lives Matter. Jack- Support your local weed dealers. Double support check. your local restaurants. Triple check. Give your parents a call and Damn never, right. ever forget to boo the heels. Boo!